Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing. And I just want to thank you for clicking on this video. I appreciate each and every one of you for coming back. And if you're new to the channel, well, this is Texas All Water Fishing. This is this is me, this is Ruben, this is what you get. Now, typically I am on the water and uh and I was just right in the middle of editing of editing a video where I went out with Captain Charles and a patron laddie we went out and we fished the, the jetties the Galveston jetties and we had a lot of fun but I was thinking you know what I went out yesterday and I really want to share my fishing report well, not just my patrons, because typically every day, every time I go out, the day of or the day after, I will share my fishing report and what I caught and the water conditions and, and kind of where I put in with my Patreons. And uh, I haven't done that yet. So I'm saving that for a little later. But I thought, you know what? Let me share it with everybody. Let me share it with everybody in YouTube land. And they kind of see my technique or my process of not only how where I decide to go but kind of how, how I fish in the areas I target and they can kind of have a little bit of more insight especially those that are new to fishing so yeah so on this Texas all water fishing we're gonna do a fishing report hey before we go any further with the video I just want to thank each and every one of you again for clicking on it don't forget subscribe to the channel like the video leave a comment all that stuff helps out the channel tremendously. And don't forget, there's other additional links and other information in the description section of this video. And sometimes I can answer your questions. So uh, I try to put more detailed information down in the description section, especially if it's something that I did miss. And also the links that I'm using on this video. So check out the description section. Thanks for coming back. All right. So one of the places I want to go, well, the place I want to go fish. And I'm going to show you on the PC real fast right here. But uh, the, the place I went to go fish was... Uh, Christmas Bay. Now, I am not in any means, in any way, trying to direct somebody to go fish Christmas Bay because Christmas Bay for me is very hit and miss. And especially if you are someone who fishes on the weekend, Christmas Bay is a place that can be very, very crowded on the weekend. Sometimes it can look like it's a holiday out there. Uh, it's it's a great place for it's a gr it's I like fishing there for several reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is because I fished it for like 12 years now, so I know it pretty good. But one of the reasons why I do fish there uh, sometimes instead of Galveston or the Freeport area is because the winds. Uh, the winds can be v much calmer the further south you go. Uh, a lot of times than Galveston, and yesterday we were predicting to have, uh, I guess it was like around 10 in the morning, we were predicting to have about, 20 mile an hour gust in Galveston uh, in Freeport it was closer to 17 18 so Galveston about 23 so uh, yeah that, that makes a little bit of a difference but when I did get there I did fly my drone a little bit and uh, and I'm gonna just say this right now just so there's a disclaimer before we go any further it was tough <laughs> I caught one fish yesterday it was tough Tough, tough. Uh, I'll just show you real fast on the PC, kind of where Ga uh, where where Galveston is, where Christmas Bay is, and um, I'll give you an address to punch in. Uh, again, I'm not trying to send anybody there. So if you think well, you know what Christmas Bay fishing report, I've never done it before. It sounds interesting. I only fish on the weekends. I don't like the idea of being very, very crowded water. Well, you can use Google Maps and kind of look around the area around, in and around Christmas Bay. There's also different places to fish going down towards Surfside, towards Freeport, uh, San Luis Pass. There, there's other areas you can fish and um, just, you know, use Google Maps and, and go out and explore a little bit and see if you can find, you know, find your own spot, your own location. And in about 10, 12 years, you'll be like, wow, I really know that place really good. But um, no, but seriously. All right, so here is Houston, Texas, and uh, so you have San Luis Pass right over here in this area. Yep, there's Christmas Bay right there, Christmas Bay. And I say Christmas Bay, but I don't fish Christmas, actually Christmas Bay a whole, whole lot. I, I tend to come around and fish this area right in here. Um, one of the reasons why I do like Christmas Bay and one of the reasons why I first started fishing in Christmas Bay was because it offers 
different water types. It doesn't just offer just like a marsh system, although it does have a couple little marshes, but it doesn't just offer marsh system, and it just doesn't just offer like a bay where you typically have like flats and you have some grass flats, but it also offers marsh, flats, and also a deeper channel. Churchill Bayou offers a deeper channel, and uh, I think it's like some places and get around anywhere from 8 to 16 feet. Just kind of depends on the water level. And then you also have Cold Pass over here, which is a little bigger. And, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's, it, it's a little deeper too. But I also like it because there's a boat ramp. So if you got a boat, you can put your boat in. But I also like it because there's a bank. So you can easily, you know, drag your kayak off the back of your truck and, and put in pretty easy. Or if you are someone who wade fishes, a, a lot of people will come out here and wade fish. Um, I've never wade fished there before, but I see people wade fishing there all the time. Uh, it's pretty shallow. It's pretty flat. Uh, obviously, where the boat cut is, it's going to get a little deeper, but it's not really, really deep. Um just, again, it all depends on the tide level, what the tide is doing. So here's the address right here. We're going to tap on that, and that's going to pull up the address. Texas Park and Wildlife, uh, boat ramp, 515, Amigo Lane, Freeport, Texas. And like I said, I've been coming out here for like about 10 years, and it's grown in popularity over the years. Real fast, what I just want to share with you is some water conditions, and yes, I did write them down. All right, the water level was low. Now, Looking at tides for fishing, the water was supposed to be high at 7 o'clock. I got a little bit of late start. I got up out there about like 9.30, which is really, really late. I left like three hours later than I wanted to. So when I got there, I thought we would have, you know, close to right about here and then have the, the water kind of going out. But the water was very, very low, which surprised me because I'm like thinking, oh, my gosh, if the water is this low, how low, does, how low is the water going to be? And... The water was low because we had strong north winds, very strong north winds with the front. And when those strong north winds come through, a lot of times they're going to push the water out. Now, the winds were have been shifting and dying down. So when I got on the water, they were probably like east, northeast, more more east than northeast. But they were blowing probably around 15 miles an hour. And they were supposed to be climbing. The winds were supposed to be picking up as the day went on. Now... What I was saying is when you have those fronts that come in, they push the water level out with the winds kind of shifting more out of the east and into the south. That was going to allow the water to start coming back in. So low tides was high tides supposed to be at nine o'clock and the water was supposed to be dropping through midday. It did not do that. And also with those strong winds on Sunday, the water was very, very dirty. We also had some rain in the area. I'm not too sure how much rain uh, Christmas Bay got, but there's also uh, runoff that's included whenever you have rain there's also going to be runoff so we had rain possible runoff and strong winds the water was very very dirty i mean very dirty very milky very silty maybe four inches of visibility and a lot of times out here the water is pretty clean so when you have that drastic water change that drastic water change like that, it can really, really choke out the bite. And uh, it did that. That w that water level dropped a lot. It can scatter the fish. Dirty water can choke the bite. And it was tough. It was a tough, tough. Before we go any further, I just want you to know, I caught one fish yesterday. And I was on the water for six hours. Six hours, yeah. And I caught one fish. It was tough. It was tough. But I did see a lot of bait. I saw a ton of bait, a ton of mullet, and I'm excited about this. Shad, small little fresh hash chat shad, small little fresh mullet, little bit of little bit of shrimp, just a little bit of shrimp. wasn't well, a whole bunch of shrimp, but a little bit of shrimp. But I'm excited about the shad. Everything loves it. Everything likes it. You see a little shad just popping and popping in the water. It doesn't matter. Speckle trout, flounder, reds, hardheads, croaker, sand trout. They all love that shad. I don't know what that stuff is or why it tastes so good to them, but they will destroy it. But keep that in mind when you are out. Match the hatch. You have uh, 
I'm telling you this now, so before the weekend comes, before you decide to go out, go out there and maybe try to find a couple little smaller spoons, maybe even the jig head with the little blade in it. You know, try to find something to mimic that that hatch, even maybe even a smaller profile lure, some smaller swim baits. I mean, even go, I mean, just match and match and match the hatch. But I'm going to show you my route that I took and uh, and, and just kind of explain you a little bit more on where, where I saw and, and, and where the activity was. All right, so I, like I said, I put in right here, and uh, I quickly flew my drone because I knew the winds were going to pick up um, pretty pretty quick and as the day went on, but I wanted to fly my drone a little bit. So I did. I flew my drone out here, and I think I flew for like a total of like four minutes because uh, I got a wind advisory saying, land your drone, go home immediately, do not pass go, do not collect $200. So I had to pull my drone back down, and I landed my drone quickly. And then I came out. The, like I said, the water level was low. But when I left, the water level was back, almost back to normal. So I came out here, and typically I'll come out here and I'll fish the mouth. Any intersecting waters always, always, always fish. Now, I do see a lot of people that do like to hug this grass line because you have a lot of drains that come out here, right? But me, typically, I'll hit this, and I'll hit straight into Churchill Bayou. I kind of fish this area just a little bit. There was another kayaker over here fishing this this side the wind is coming in this direction so this is kind of protected so you can really see if there was fish on the water but it was so dirty gosh the water was so dirty it hurt me because it was so dirty and as i was coming through here now you kind of have like a soft shoulder and then it kind of dips down a little bit as it goes into more deeper water churchill bio is deeper water so a lot of times when you do have those that that water level that drops constantly and flat you are fast you can find all those predator fish into that deeper water and that's kind of what i was thinking because i knew that we had strong winds sunday so i knew the water level was going to be low with that in mind i thought okay let me find some deep holes let me find a deep hole let me go to freeport because there's less wind let me find a deep hole and or some deep a deep channel that i can fish uh, as I was coming through here, I started casting this drain, and I noticed, like, back in this area over here, there was fish, like, splashing and splashing. Bait fish was, like, splashing and splashing everywhere, but it was so low. I mean, like, I barely got out of here. I almost fell. <laughs> and I came over here, you know, standing up on my kayak and casting and casting, and it was, it, it, it looked like it was, like, real small. Could have been croaker. Could have been whiting. Uh, even could have been sand trout, but it was some real small. I mean, it even could have been hardheads. Uh, could have even been small reds. I have no idea, but something real small that was going through here and just making the shad pop and pop and pop and pop. And uh, and it, it it honestly uh, sometimes it can be mullet scaring the shad. Um, like I said, there was tons of mullet, ton of mullet everywhere, ton of bait. So it's just, it was just popping and popping, and I stood here, and I cast a lot. And and it's good, to even even with lower water conditions, even with uh, dirtier water, it's always good to go out and explore. So if I was going, like, if the winds were going to be calm over the next couple of days and I was going to try to go back out again, I, I would come back over here and fish this area again with the simple fact that I know that there was bait there. Um, I really wanted to get back over and get get into this drain, but like I said, the water was too low. And as I was coming back, I actually had to get out of my kayak. It was kind of funny. I had to get out of my kayak and drag my kayak back because I probably spent about 20, 25 minutes there. And uh, as I was coming back, it seemed like the water seemed like the water dropped a little bit, but in in all reality, it didn't drop. It was still constantly coming in. But I did gotta get out of my kayak and try to drag my kayak, and I sunk down like little past my knee i kind of scared myself and had to jump back in my kayak because i didn't want to you know get sucked in <laughs> and lose my hip waders it's one of the reasons why i always wear hip waders i really like hip waders especially when the water is when it's a little cool yesterday i really didn't need them but um for getting out of my kayak and, and exploring a little more i really like hip waders um typically un Unless I'm going to wade fish next to my kayak, you know, the hip waders are the way to go. Kind of keeps you dry, too. So I came back over here. I shot back across here. I wanted to fish this side again, just casting and casting. I ducked in here. I ducked in here and hoping that I could catch something hanging out around these drains. I didn't get anything. I turned back around. And mind you, I had a strong incoming tide. I have winds coming this way. And I started noticing uh, a lot of birds over here. A lot of birds back in this marsh. 
So I quickly hightailed it. I came through here. I pitched a cast a few times at the drain, came over here, casted this drain too, and I hightailed it in here, and I came in here and entered into this marsh system. Now, one thing that I didn't notice the whole way over here and the whole way over there, I just noticed a lot of bait. Just a lot of bait everywhere, just on the grass lines, everywhere I went. Uh, just nothing was biting. I I probably had like maybe about four or five bumps at this time, but nothing was biting. And, and you know, and it's it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a distance from here to there. I mean, we're looking at, looking about two miles. And then if you're going to come back all the way around into the marsh, yep, it's about two miles. So it's about two miles to, to enter the marsh system. So, um drive system kayaks or motorized kayak you know that's probably the way to go if you're using your arms i like i've said i've done this in a 10 foot paddle kayak before plenty of times so like i said i've been fishing out here for over 10 years so i came to the marsh system and i'm just casting and pitching around all these drains and and i'm really coming back in here and there's like very low water line ever water's very low very pushed out uh it's coming back in and i'm just i I think I saw like maybe three reds that it, I was kind of just scaring them or the bait was scaring them. Uh, the birds that were working were just kind of working like just like in real funky, like very low lane water uh, spots. And this was just a ton of bait. I mean, we had live birds, cranes. There was a lot of birds and a lot of bait. No fish. I came back in here and I think like right about here was the only fish I caught. I put on a spoon and unfortunately I didn't have any spoons with me. Shame on me. I only had like one spoon on, spoon on me. It was kind of like a Johnson style spot, uh, uh, style spoon. Um, like the big leaf one. It wasn't like the cast master that I normally like to use. Um, it wasn't Johnson. It was actually H2O Express, but it was the style. And, uh, I caught a black drum. He was probably 13, 14 inches. Uh, wasn't much to him. Uh, wasn't much to the fight here. I was actually hung up. And then as it came off, he, he hit it. And that was it. I came back out. I came through here. I pitched again at all these drains. Came through here again. Pitched at all these drains. Came over here. Pitched this area. Nothing. Come through here. Pitched over here a little bit. And just came back. Came back to the landing. Um, yeah, it was tough, though. It was tough. But the thing that I want to talk about. More important than Christmas Bay was the ocean. It's beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. the The beachfront looked outstanding. It looked amazing. Oh my gosh! It looked good as I was going out. It was kind of sandy brown, like the first maybe about 100, 150 yards. And then as the the, the tide was coming in back in, it got cleaner and cleaner. Look, you can see right here. This is this is from like that Surfside area. I, I, I wouldn't say Surfside. This is like this is um, Jamaica Beach. This is Jamaica Beach. That's probably it's sandy, like sandy, sandy green. Um, with the polarized lenses from your glasses, you can see a little better. A little bit of sand right there, but there's trout in there. There was trout in there. You can find trout in that water, and you can see it a lot cleaner, probably about 150, 140 yards out. The closer I got to the seawall, the cleaner the water got. This is what the water looked like yesterday. This is at 2 o'clock. <laughs> this was at 2 o'clock. Little bit of a chop, but yeah, you can see how clean the water got yesterday. Two o'clock. Saltwater recon camera looked amazing. Looked amazing. I was dead tired though. I was dead tired. I was dead tired today. Today, not so much. Not so much clean water. I mean, somebody's controlling this camera right now, but it's gonna. It's choppy. It's choppy. The the surf built up, the winds picked up uh overnight, and they're gonna pick up as as the day goes on and it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. You get you're not gonna get and this is this right here, this is still Freeport San Luis Pass area. But you can see right here the gust is picking up and coming out of the south. If we would have kept it 
like not south, maybe even stayed on the east or even the west, a little bit more north, we probably would have got lucky. But yeah, we're not lucky. Dang it. Dang it. It looked so good yesterday. Oh my gosh. When I was leaving, I couldn't stand it. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to share with you guys. You know, I got on the phone with Captain Cody. I called other friends of mine. And I'm like, look at the surf. Oh my gosh. The surf was not supposed to be good. It was not supposed to be clean, but it ended up being clean like for a brief minute. And I almost went and, and fished the, the, the South Jetties. Uh, I, I had all my stuff ready to go and, and roll out and fish the South Jetties. I ended up call, making an audible last minute, ended up taking the kayak out because I, I want to be in the kayak, try to be in the kayak at least once a week. And uh, I want to get out there in the kayak and, and do a little fishing so I can share the information with my patrons as well, uh, kind of what the water conditions are, what the bait is looking like, and, and kind of give them an overall feel of what's going on out there. But, man... That water was looking good. It's not looking that good anymore. You know, the 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 wind picked up and it's gonna pick up all week and it's gonna be it's gonna be what it is. It is what it is. But um I hope you guys enjoy this this kind of content. You know, I just want to give a fast fish report, quick fish report, you know, what the week is gonna look like. It's gonna be windy. What's going on out there? The water's kind of dirty. Uh, going over the causeway the causeway was a little dirty yesterday the winds are going to pick up so we might you know we're going to see the south winds pick up so we're going to have the tide come back in but unfortunately those strong winds are also going to make everything pretty dirty so if you are planning on going out anytime soon live bait dark color lures uh more scent more chatter um throw some spoons you know match the hatch like i was talking about with the shad um you know what what smaller profile lures for a lot of the smaller mullet but there was a lot of big mullet out there too there was a big big mullet i was surrounded by schools and schools of mullet everywhere i went especially in the marsh they were everywhere but yeah thank you guys i appreciate each and every one of you thanks for clicking on this video thanks for supporting the channel and i really mean that because this is you're why i'm here your reason why i'm sitting down here tossing a fishing and uh fishing forecast or not a forecast but a fishing report you know you're the reason why i'm here you're the reason why i'm doing it so thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel go and hit that subscribe button hit that like button bell notification all of that helps the channel out tremendously and i'm gonna get back to editing so um yeah so in a day or two you'll have the content and see kind of see how we did it at the jetties but until next time, I hope you catch me hooking up. Thanks. Thanks.